What's up guys, it's Chasing Business Workshop. Um, here in the past couple weeks, I've decided to start upgrading my CNC machine. If you guys haven't seen it before, this is a uh, actually a Gatton CNC, and I built this thing probably in 2016 maybe, somewhere in there, 17. I can't remember exactly. But um, anyways, what I'm wanting to do is, one of the weaknesses on this guy was the way this actual uh, X-axis attached to my gantry. And the way it did, it kind of did the same thing as this right here. Or as you can see, we have two bearings and they're riding on a piece of uh, angled aluminum. Um, and it used these two guys right here, which I've already kind of torn them apart. But if you can imagine, there was a piece of aluminum, uh, angled aluminum on the top and there was one there. And then this guy mounted like so. And then the way you added strength to it was you basically pried this thing apart. Well, the only problem was is the way these bearings from this guy were riding on it. Um, when I would get to this end, I had slop. I, I could get it tight in the middle where I had um, it where it wouldn't have any slop in it. And then when it come over here, it would do the same. It would um, it would have a little slop. And um, I think that was causing me to have issues when I was riding things to where when it got out here wide, it was making slop. So I've decided to upgrade that to linear guide rails and um, I ended up buying some on eBay and they were about a hundred dollars for a pretty much a 32 inch set. I can't remember what that is in millimeters but um, that's what I used. So we're going to upgrade it to that. I'm going to temporarily install this same x-axis onto that. And then um, eventually I want to upgrade that to aluminum, which you can see here. So I want this guy to be aluminum. And then, of course, I'm going to have the Z axis, which is this guy right here. I'm going to eventually upgrade that as well to aluminum as well. So I'll probably end up having to buy another set of guide rails for the Z axis to ride on this thing. And then um, my last thing I want to do is install a spindle for this guy. So um, I'm, it's going to end up being probably a, a, a cheap Chinese spindle, as, as bad as I hate to say it. But um, the only problem is, is some of the spindles are, you know, two grand just for a, a good spindle. Maybe in the future I can update to that. So yeah, that's what I plan on doing to this guy. And I've also bought two new... Uh, y-axis motors i had these guys here and um as you can see this one's pretty good i don't have any any in and out play maybe a little bit but this guy over here was also giving me some problems as you can see here and i upgraded these guys to i think they're 200 uh 200 i can't remember the dang thing for it. but anyways they're stronger than those two and um, so i'm going to upgrade those guys now what i want to go over uh two is is that what i'm upgrading in my control box here as you can see i've still got uh the three stepper on line boards they're the dm542t i actually made a video where i show how to put these guys in i'll put a link to it right here and i've still got this z-axis as one of these old cheap don't even have a name on them boards. I guess no name boards. But um, I'm going to change this guy out. I just ordered a new one of these. Um, one other th issue that I've had, not really an issue, but um, th something that I've wanted to upgrade is, is that this board is actually powered by 24 volts. This is a 24 volt power supply and it's 15 amps. And um, I want to upgrade it to this guy here, which is 48 volts, 20 amp power supply. And that's another reason why I'm buying a new board for this guy. Because this thing, if you can't, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it only goes up to 42 volts DC. Whereas these boards go up to 50 volts, as you can see right down there at the bottom left. Um, so I'm upgrading that one to that. And then um, that way we can power this guy at 48 volts. So I'm going to do this video. Basically, I'm just going to go through tearing this guy out, put this guy in, and I'm doing a few upgrades to it. Okay, so to start, I'm going to try to figure out a way to get this guy out. I actually used double-sided tape to put this thing in, so it's going to be a pain in the butt to get out, probably. 
Um, this guy right here, this is the five volt power supply. I had another video where I went over all these parts, but I'll go over them right quick too if you're seeing this for the first time. But um, this is actually a power supply from a computer and um, it gives uh, three, five, and 12 volts right here. Um, I use, and then it's got of course a common, but um, I use the, the voltages from this guy. Um, this yellow one right here goes 12 volts and powers this fan down here. Powers this fan. Uh, then I've got five volts, I believe it is, if I remember correctly. Five volts, which is orange, which is going to my breakout wall right here. And this is a C10R10.3 breakout board. Can't remember exactly where I got it, but I remember, um, um, I, I, I know it's in the other video that I made on this guy, and I'll put a link to it here too where you can see it. But um, th this is all it does. It powers that and that. And um, so it's not using, it's not using anything else other than, other than the power of that board and the power of that fan. And then of course this guy powers all three of the stepper motors. Or I'm sorry, all four of the stepper motors. So uh, uh, bringing this thing up to 48 volts, I think it's gonna do it a lot more. Uh, I'm gonna be able to get more speed and more torque. And I'm gonna be able to pretty much get as, uh, hopefully get everything that I want out of upgrading this machine to that. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna pull this guy out. These things are powered uh, by 110 volts. It comes in here, then I've just got a jumper right here that goes off and goes to power this power supply, but this is my line voltage. Just goes through a switch right here that I've mounted on the front. See it right there, it's just a, out of an old computer. This is why my wife gets mad at me because I don't ever throw anything away, but if I'd thrown it away, I wouldn't have that switch. But anyways, so yeah, there's that. Um, and it just wires in 110 volts right here. And then of course we've got our neutral that comes off. Now I'm just gonna say right now, if you ain't comfortable messing with electronics, don't don't attempt this. Um, one thing to remember about this guys, these things can store a charge too. So uh, just be careful when working with them, you can get a good pop and um, it can hurt. So just be cautious of that. But anyways, I'm gonna pull this guy out. Another problem I have is I actually use double-sided tape to put this guy in. So I'm probably gonna rip half the bottom of the case off when I do this, but uh, we're gonna go that way with it. And basically the way this thing wires up, um, you can't really see it, but this is the negative volt, negative right here, which is the green and the two browns. And I've got a uh, voltage positive right here, which is this red, it's feeding one of the Y, and then it's jumping off and going to the other Y uh, axis. Um, the white's going to the X axis, and then the red, I mean the black, is going to the Z axis right here. So we're gonna pull, I'm gonna leave this guy in here, but I'm gonna leave it unhooked right here so that when I get my new board, all I gotta do is throw it in there and uh, it'll be done. So here we go. Let's pull these wires out. The one thing I like to do before I do that is I like to take a picture just in case. I forget where the crap I'm at when I'm doing this. I just like to take a picture of it. So in case I get confused about what goes to what, I can uh, just reference that picture. So that, like I said, jumps over to this guy just to power it. And then there's our actual power coming in. We've got our neutrals, our grounds, and all our other wires. So I'm gonna try to pry this guy off of here. Hopefully it comes off easy. I've done had to pry this thing off. I had it all set in here. So there's that. But anyways, here's the old board, or power supply. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's still good shape. 24 volts, 15 amps, right there. Now, one thing to, to look at here too is if you wanna run this guy off at 220, you can, you just have to flip this switch up to, well, 230, but it's the same thing. But um, we're running at 115 volts. Um, this 24 volt power supply has the same thing. It's got 110 volt or a 220 volt. So basically the exact same thing. Now I paid uh, I paid 100 and about 140 bucks for this guy. This one right here was I think I want to say about 30, 40 bucks maybe somewhere in there. So yeah, this thing's a little more expensive, but it's 20 amps. So you're paying for amps. And the problem, the thing, the biggest thing is, is that you can get you can get 24 volts in a high amperage um, for pretty cheap. But the thing is when you stepped it up to a higher voltage, 
um, you start paying for more amps. And um, you can find, a lot of times you can find a, a 48 volt power supply, but it might only be five amps and you'll pay for what you pay for one of these. But the problem with that is, is that with all my motors and everything that I have in my, in my, on my machine, they total up to about 12 amps. So um, I went ahead and got a little bit more over, overkill for that. So now I've got 20 amps. Whereas, um, you know, if I, if I went about this bigger one, I'd have had to buy four of these guys to power, uh, with 48 volts to power on my whole board, if that makes sense. So I got this guy, which is big enough to power everything I got. Hope that makes sense. If not, just leave me a message and I'll explain it better, hopefully. But uh, one thing I do like about this one already is I can screw it down. I don't have to use double-sided tape. I gotta figure out a way to keep dust out of this thing too. Once I get this guy in, I'm gonna amp this out and see about how many amps this thing's pulling. Under load that way, I can see if this thing. If I need to get a bigger wire. This wire looks pretty small. Got a neutral right there. So I got to put my neutral from my other one on there as well. It's a neutral. And the ground is the third one. One reason why I'm wanting to upgrade this thing is because I'm wanting to get to where I can start making the back cover plates for the G benders, P and G benders. I'm also wanting to be able to make the strap trim pieces for the B and G benders. And I'd also like to end up uh, start making some parts for pickup winders. So I'm thinking if I can upgrade this stuff, at least some of you guys can get those parts for me and you could try to make them yourself. I don't use this guy to make the bender, the actual aluminum parts because, I mean, this is a wood machine and he made it. I mean, it can. I actually made it. The first one I ever did was made on this machine, but uh, as far as trying to get this guy to make those parts, this thing would be destroyed within a couple months. All right, so there is that. I've got to run that there, and then I've got to extend this one to there. This was long enough. Guess I couldn't move that. Line voltage, neutral, and ground hooked up. Okay, well, I've had to change the plan again. I've decided to move this guy down here and move it over here closer to our power supply. Then our fan on the back right here can get out of this hole. Um, I think it would just work better. And I'll move this, I'm gonna move this guy and shorten <clears throat> these wires right here. And put this guy right here. Hopefully it all works out well. The only problem is I'm gonna have to extend all of these wires, or some of them, these two right here for sure. These can probably still make it over there. So, now that that's been done, I'm going to reattach this one. One of the biggest problems when messing with CNC stuff is, is that, <clears throat> like I said, this thing's been together for, except for me putting these new drivers, driver boards in. This thing's been together since 2017, 16, somewhere in there. So I have to basically relearn where all this crap goes. Okay, so there's my power supply for that. I'm gonna kind of see if I can't wrap this guy around here. I kind of wish I wouldn't have cut all this now. I just left it alone. 
There's that. Now I can put this guy in. Or my power supply. Alright, now what I want to do is I'm going to plug this guy in and see what kind of voltages I'm getting here. Voltage DC. It's, should be off right there. Let's make sure everything's right. We got black coming in, going to line, neutral to neutral, ground to ground, and we should be good. All right, let's plug her in. No, we won't have any explosions. So I shouldn't have any voltage right now. Get it on. All right. Let's see what the voltage is here. Let's go to voltage AC. Forty-seven point eight volts. Okay, so I got everything. I got this stuff here, uh, kind of shortened. I mean, basically, all this guy, like I said, all it's doing is it's powering this board and it's powering my limit switches, which uh, come off and go right here. I've just got a um, aircraft connector here that connects to my motors, and I've got one ran for my limit switch. It's only got two hooked up on it. That's what it does. And this board, you can control anything on here in Mach 3. Mach 3, when you pull it up, it'll have um, all these different inputs and outputs that you can adjust to whatever you'd like. So now I got that shortened. I've got this guy wired up. So now what I gotta do is, is I'm gonna wire these guys here. Um, I'm gonna not wire this one yet. I'm gonna leave this one unwired. I'm gonna unplug it right here. I believe that will pull out one. Yep. So I just leave that one unplugged. And then when I get my new board, all I've got to do is hook it up. Okay, so I spun everything around where I can see it now. Um, right here on this board, you can't see it, but I'll sit up here where you can. We've got our ground and our plus voltage right here, and that's what we're going to be wiring into. So I'm going to pull these guys out. I'm hoping I can reuse the same wires. Which I really ain't got to pull these two out. If I can use them. I'm, have to loosen. I'm just going to switch the side that this thing comes in on. There. So green is ground. Now I'll be getting two brand new motors for this Y axis. These two are my Y axis, this is my X, and this is my Z. So I'm gonna try to get this guy to mount here instead of there. Same thing with my red wire. Let's see if I've got enough room to where I've got a more wire. Alright, so we've got voltage negative first, which would be this one. negative and this red one's gonna be a little short. Uh, yep, I want to get some more wire. This is gonna be voltage positive, which needs to plug in. So I've got voltage negative on green, <clears throat> going to ground, and then I've got voltage positive on yellow, going to B plus. Y to V plus. And then this guy here. Brown to ground. We got green, brown, brown. There's a brown. Blacks are 
plus voltage. So we should be good there. So I'm going to get my new board. All I'm going to do is wire that into it. We're good to go. Alright. Green. To ground. To ground. Alright. So on the ground. The negative. We've got brown. Goes to ground there. And be negative. Brown goes to ground on that one. And then we've got yellow to B plus. And we've got white to B plus. And we've got black to B plus. So now that should power all our boards. Except for this one, because I've got it disconnected. So best way these boards work is these first two right here come from our power supply, which is our ground and our negative. Hope you can see that. Then you have A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. That comes from, that's, that's what sends out to our motors. So it's basically taking the voltage in and then it's incrementing it and sending it out as the higher voltage in the 48. On this side of it, you have a pulse five volts, pulse negative, direction plus five volts, and a direction. So what this does is it's bringing five volts from our breakout board here. Five volts is a common, where you see plus five volts and plus five volts, it just comes here and then jumps over to this other plus five volts. And then these two right here are actual signal wires and they come from our direction and our, our pulse on our board here. That's pretty much all set up in Mach 3. Um, it takes a little tinkering around with to get it exactly right. Um, one of my next upgrades, I've also bought some more wire. I bought some actually shielded wire. So I'm probably going to upgrade um, where it leaves here and goes out to my machine. So I'm going to take this thing back out here. I'm going to plug it up. I'm going to try to mount this thing here. I'll probably just put a strap around it and mount it. But um, I'm going to take this thing out here and we're going to plug it up and see if I blow anything up. So wish me luck. Okay, so we've got our plug back in now. Got her running down there. I'm gonna get to get a quieter fan for that thing. That thing is loud as it can be. But anyways, um, I've kind of messed with the tunings a little bit. Before, uh, this is on the Y axis. We'll go to the uh, X axis. As you can tell, I don't have my Z on here. So um, I'm only can really work off of these three motors that I've got. But um, I've got the velocity set at 100. And this is this is basically what I was running it on before. You can tell I got a little wilt in that uh, lead screw. Um, hopefully, I know it, the half inch is a little a little weaker than the thicker. I might upgrade that eventually one day. But um, I want to once I get everything back together, I'm gonna kind of play with that. Anyways, I'm gonna switch this guy up to. Instead of right here on the velocity, instead of 100, I'm going to go to 300 and uh, see what we get. I know you really can't tell how fast that is, but uh, it's way faster than it was before. Let's try 350. See what that does. Maybe it won't blow nothing up here. And there won't be no reason for me to go that fast, <laughs> but I can if I want to, I guess. Played with it at 250. Now that's probably where I'll run it at. And then I'm going to change the velocity to 50 as well. Or change it to 50. And all that does is, is if I change this to a really low number, as you can tell here, when the thing fires up, it has kind of like a speed up, full speed, and then a speed down. So if I change this to say like 10, as you can see there, now just imagine that on this motor and it's gonna slowly speed up and then get to full speed. Do you hear it? So let's go take that back to one. And you'll see what I'm talking about for real.
So that's, that is the acceleration. I think I might have said that was a velocity. That's acceleration right here. So we'll take that back to day 25. That's probably faster than I'm ever going to need it. Okay, now let's go to the Y axis. It didn't save. So let's do this. 225. And what did I say? 25 there. Save axis. That was on the X. I did 250. Save that. Okay, let's go to the Y axis. Here's what my settings were before, as you can tell. That is, is how fast it was going. So we're going to change this guy, the velocity, to 250 as well. We'll move this to 25. Let's see what we get. So we get a lot more speed. And we'll click save. Now I'll do the same with the Z axis, but like I said, I don't have it on here. It's actually in the floor down there. That's kind of what... And right now I've got it set to where if I'm just jogging, it's at a, I think it's at 80%. If I hold shift down and go, it goes at the full velocity. So there we go. So yes, I get a lot more speed out of this guy. Um, everything's wired up here. Um, I've got the 48 volt power supply, the uh, computer power supply there. And I was getting a, on these boards, if you if you get a fault, cut this thing off where you can see it. If you get a fault, this little red light will start blinking. And I don't know if when I was hooking this guy up, if I did something that uh, made it not work right. But uh, anyways, it, it, it started working after that. So anyways, the next video you'll see about this thing, I'll probably be putting these guide rails on here and uh, reinstalling the x-axis and getting all that stuff done so guys hope you enjoyed this this is kind of a little shop update what i've been working on some things i've been doing and um finally got some time for myself to do this after building b and g bender kits for weeks now um i've kind of hit a slow point so uh yeah so we're getting to mess around a little bit guys hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions about any of this stuff as always just leave them in the description i'll be glad to help you out and uh lead you in the direction you would like to go